Hitman 2 is essentially more of its predecessor, which is no bad thing. However, IO Interactive has certainly made it look a bit more impressive, with denser crowds and some extra bells and whistles. But how well does it run compared to 2016's Hitman? A major talking point here is that DirectX 12 was dropped for the new game, which is odd considering it was in the previous version. It's even more confusing considering Hitman was one of the best DirectX 12 implementations. It speaks to the amount of extra work maintaining two separate APIs requires. With a lack of AMD branding this time round, apparently DirectX 12 was deemed unnecessary. In terms of hardware, most mainstream GPUs, the GTX 1050 Ti, RX 570 and above, can run Hitman 2 at 1080p and 60 frames per second or more. And while you'll also benefit from a faster CPU in some areas, especially larger crowds, just about any CPU from the past five years should suffice. Most of the graphics card testing is as you would expect, with the beefy Nvidia cards coming out on top at all resolutions and graphics settings. The super expensive RTX 2080 Ti really shows how good it is at 4K with maximum or ultra quality, still easily breaking 60 frames per second while everything else struggles. It beats out the RTX 2080 by around 24%, and then it's another steep drop down to the 1080 Ti and beyond. The best AMD can manage at these settings is the RX Vega 64, which falls between the GTX 1070 Ti and GTX 1080 but the RTX 2080 Ti gives you a performance increase of a whopping 50% for about triple the price. Unless you're breaking the bank on a graphics card, you'll probably want to stay away from the resolution and graphics setting. Ultra at 2560x1440 makes for slightly better reading, although the cards come close to the budget end of the scale won't handle this very well either. The 2080 Ti comes out on top of course, but it's only a small step down to the RTX 2080. We're starting to hit CPU limits as well, even with an overclocked i7 8700K. The RX Vega 64 sits between the GTX 1070 Ti and 1080 again, while the 580 or 570 cards slightly outperform their 1060 counterparts. If you're looking for this resolution and graphical quality above 60 frames per second, you'll at least want an RX 590 or above, and perhaps tweak your settings slightly. Down to 1920 by 1080 then, and the gaps start to close up, particularly at the top. Everything from the GTX 1080 up to the RTX 2080 performs basically the same, with a couple percent increase in performance for the 2080 Ti. The RX Vega 64 isn't far behind either, basically we're hitting CPU limitations. Just about all of the cards run above 60 frames per second just fine. You'd have to go back a generation or two to find a budget card not able to hit that mark. Even the GTX 1063GB handles it fine. Drop the graphics setting to medium, we use the medium or moderate setting where available, with SSAO and screen space shadows off, and most cars will run Hitman 2 like a dream. However, the budget GPUs like the GTX 1050, 1050Ti and RX 560 still struggle with maintaining 60 frames per second. Elsewhere, our test sequence clearly hits the CPU harder, as from the GTX 1063GB right up to the RTX 2080 Ti, you'll only find about a 10% performance difference. For integrated graphics solutions, the Ryzen 5 2400G with Vega 11 graphics does reasonably well, averaging 40 frames per second. Oddly, dropping the resolution to 720p and minimum quality doesn't really help it run any faster, so it's bumping other bottlenecks. Intel's HD Graphics 630, meanwhile, comes up well short of being playable, mustering just 16 frames per second even at minimum quality and 720p. For CPU testing, we're using the MSI RTX 2080 Duke. A powerful graphics card like this will best highlight the performance potential for each of the CPUs we tested. At 1080p, the Core i7-8700K OC actually jumps above the i9 at both medium and ultra. The AMD CPUs range about 21 and 25% worse performance compared to the i7 at both graphics settings. At 3840 by 2160 Ultra, all the CPUs handle it around the same, with only a 3 or 4% drop in performance when you compare the Ryzen 5 2600X to the Core i9 9900K. It's when you start dropping the resolution and the graphics quality that you start to see the big differences come into play. At 2560 by 1440 Ultra, the i9-9900K still performs the best, with the Core i7-8700K OC not far behind. The other CPUs then start to see a drop off in quality. The Core i3-8100 is 22% worse off compared to its big, big brother. The AMD CPUs fare better than the i3, 
but there's a big jump up to the Core i5-8400 and the rest of the Intel CPUs at the top of the list. Over to laptops, it's about as you'd expect, with desktop GPUs outpacing the mobile versions even though they sound beefier on paper. At both medium and ultra, since we're limited to 1080p displays on two of the three laptops, the desktop GTX 1060 outpaces even the GT73 VR1080 and by a pretty huge margin of medium quality. The desktop 1060 is 25% faster at medium, while at ultra the mobile GPUs cash up a bit and the GTX 1060 is about 7% better. Meanwhile at the bottom of the scale, the GS63VR1060 starts to struggle a bit and generally does best by turning down a few settings. Overall Hitman 2 is an excellent game and it deservedly garnered our Best Stealth Game of 2018 award. Not surprisingly, performance ends up being very similar to the previous outing in most respects, though the removal of DirectX 12 support still feels weird. Hitman 2016 saw numerous updates over time that improved performance, including support for multi-GPU under both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 modes. It's not clear if the engine and environment changed so much that maintaining both APIs was deemed too difficult, or if DirectX 12 was dropped simply because it didn't provide enough of a benefit. Or maybe the switch in publisher from Square Enix to Warner Brothers Interactive is to blame. Whatever the case, it's still an odd change of heart. We also missed the built-in benchmark mode of the previous release, not because it was absolutely necessary, but because it makes it easier for others to compare performance with our results. Left to my own devices, the benchmark sequence consists of running through a large crowd in the finish line mission. All of the people likely put more of a strain on the CPU than GPU, which may explain some of the results, and other lighter areas in terms of crowd control may run at higher frame rates. Once again, thanks to MSI for providing the hardware for this testing. We used the latest NVIDIA and AMD drivers at the time of publication, NVIDIA 417.35 and AMD 18.12.3. Testing was completed in December 2018, so a few months of patches and driver updates have helped to equalise performance.